In today's video, we're going to be covering saving, opening, previewing, and printing documents. All of these basic functions can be found within the file menu on the menu bar of OpenOffice Writer. For instance, if we go up here and click on the menu bar, we'll see open right here below new for opening previously saved documents. Below that, save, save as, and save all, which are three different tools for saving documents. And at the bottom of this menu, we see page preview and print. Now, when you hit the save button in the menu, it will do one of two different things, depending on whether or not you've saved your document previously. If you have already saved your document previously to a location on your computer or an external storage like a USB drive, then save will overwrite the previously saved documents with all of the new changes that you have uh, in the currently opened document. If you have not saved your file to a location at all previously, then hitting save will actually just open up the save as dialog. Now, the save as dialog box gives you extra options uh, as opposed to just normally saving. You can overwrite the original file. For instance, if I had Untitled 1 saved here in this folder, and I tried to save Untitled 1, then it would try to overwrite it more or less the same way that if I had just hit save instead of save as. The save as dialog also allows you to change the file extension of the file you're trying to save, which is useful if you want it to be compatible with other programs or to convert it into a different kind of format. For instance, you can change it from the default .odt file that OpenOffice uses into a Microsoft Word file. Generally, that would be the 97-2000xp.doc type uh, you will notice that the .docx, the new kind of Microsoft Word type, is not able to be saved straight from OpenOffice Writer. However, there are other formats here for you to play around with, like .html, which you may have use for in the future, so it's good to keep in mind that you have this list of different formats here. And when you're done choosing a file name, then you can just simply hit the Save button right here. Now to demonstrate opening a file, I'm going to close this one out and open it back up. So I'm going to go to File and then hit Close to get this file off the screen and close it from OpenOffice. And now we're going to go back up to File, Open, and you can also do this by hitting Control o which will bring up a very similar dialog to the Save As dialog. What the Open dialog box does is predictably allow you to select a file to open within OpenOffice Writer. For instance, we can click on the Saving file the .odt document that we previously saved, have it selected. The file name will show down here once you've selected it, and you can also manually type it in if you choose to do that, and then hit open. And there you go, very simple. Now, if you're going to be spending any significant amount of time in OpenOffice Writer, there's a very good chance you're going to need to print out a document at some point in time. Before you actually print a document, it's almost always a very good idea to hit Page Preview in the File menu in order to see what it will more or less look like when you actually print it out on paper as opposed to how it looks within OpenOffice Writer. In Print Preview mode, you will only see what will print out to the paper if you send it to the printer. You won't see any other things like margin lines or special non-printing characters. In addition to that, it'll replace the formatting toolbar with the page preview toolbar, which gives you a few other options. For instance, if you have a multiple page document and you want to see how multiple pages will look on screen at the same time, you can click here for page preview multiple pages. To the right of that, you have book preview, which will put your pages side by side two at a time. The preview zoom which will allow you to zoom in and zoom out. If you want, you can type in a specific zoom percentage. The option to go full screen, which you can do by hitting this button right here or hitting Control shift j which will remove the menu bar from the screen so you can focus specifically on what's going to print and the print toolbar. And you also have the option to print the document straight from print preview just by hitting this print document icon. Alternatively, you can finish your printing by going back up to File and then Print. In the Print dialog box, you'll be given a miniature version of Print Preview over here on the left, which, just like the normal Print Preview, won't show things like the margin lines or non-printing characters. 
It also lets you see the measurements for how wide your paper is and how tall it is as well when you actually print it out. In addition, you'll have four tabs up here, the general printer settings, which is usually all you need. But you can also go to OpenOffice Writer if you want to include or exclude certain elements from the printing job itself. For instance, if you have a page background set, you can remove it by unchecking this box. You won't see anything here because, of course, I don't have a, print, a page background. And if you have colored text, you can choose to print it as black, even if the text is some other color like blue inside of OpenOffice Writer. So those options are good to know about if, in case you need to change some things in the actual printing itself. Then we have the Page Layout tab, which allows you to add multiple pages of document to each sheet of paper you print out to, which is optional. And you normally wouldn't do that on an 8.5 by 11 sized sheet of paper. Maybe you'd have a larger document or a poster board you were printing out to. And in that case, this tab would be very useful for you. And you can optionally even choose to draw a border around each page to emphasize the separation between your text. Another option you have in this tab is to change your document into a brochure layout. And what this will do is make it horizontal printing. and your first page will be printing on the right, your second page will be printing on the left, and this will keep alternating so you have page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and that kind of printout makes it very easy to fold it into a brochure style if you have need of that. What you can also choose to do is to exclude every other page by clicking on the page sides include dialog and going to back sides for only having the left pages and front sides for only having the right pages. Now to note, the left pages are going to be the evenly numbered pages, so page 2, 4, 6, 8, and the right ones are going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, the odd numbered ones. Now the last tab over here, the options tab, is one that you normally wouldn't need to play around with, but I will say that the print to file option here allows you to take the same information it would output to your printer and instead save that into a file which you can open up with a text editor and read if you really desire to do that, but normally that's only something technical people need to play around with. Good to know anyway. Now let's go back over to the general tab to briefly discuss printing a document out. So normally you would just select a printer from the printer list here, but you will notice I have PDF Creator on this list, and that's not a printer at all. Neither is Microsoft XPS Document Writer. This would actually be a case of sending the file to a document writer, in the case of Microsoft XPS or PDF Creator, where it takes the information and converts it into a type of document, PDF, obviously, and XPS up here. But normally you would just select a printer and then that would be where it actually prints out on paper like you would normally expect. Then you can go down here to range and copies. Normally you would just have one copy and just select all the pages. Now if you want to specify a range of pages as opposed to printing everything out, you can click on the pages radio button here and start typing in numbers separated by a comma. So if you put one, three, five, seven, that would mean pages 1, 3, 5, and 7 are going to be the pages that print out and everything else is ignored in the document. You can also instead put a range such as 1-7 and you can also combine them. So you could have a range 1 through 7 and comma page 9. Now below pages you'll see a currently unselectable option to choose selection as the pages for which you would be printing. And what it means by selection is if we back out of here, like I'll do right now, and started selecting text, then it would be only the text I currently have selected within the document, which could be multiple pages, it could even be all the pages. And it'll only print those pages out or that information out. So if we go back up to print, you'll see selection as the option right here for range and copies. Now, if we actually select only half of our information on a single page, then the rest of the information will be completely ignored, as you can kind of see right here. It's hard to tell, but it's there. You can see that there's only two lines. Now, if I go back up to all pages, you'll see that all four of the lines return to what's going to be printing, because we're not going off of the selection anymore. We're just printing everything in the document. 
Now below selection is the option to print in reverse order, which is pretty self-explanatory. When you send your file to the printer, it will print in the reverse order that it normally would. Over here to the right, we can set multiple copies. If you want to print multiple copies of the same selection, either the currently selected text, the pages, and the range that we selected, or all pages. Whatever we have set as the range is what the copies are going to contain, each and every copy. Now, if we start increasing the number of copies here, you'll notice that collate opens up as a selectable option, which is chosen by default. Now, what collate does is it makes it so that when the file sends to your printer and you have multiple copies that are queued to print, it'll print out each entire copy before it starts printing pages from the next copy. So it'll print one copy of the document, the next copy of the document, and then the next one. If we uncheck collate, what it will actually do instead is print out the first or the first selected page as many times as you have copies for it, then start printing the second selected page and every copy of that, the third selected page, every copy of that, etc. And you can pretty much tell that by the little graphics they have here. Very nice. Now, when you have all your options selected as you want, and you've checked with this print preview window that everything seems to be in order, you can simply hit print, make sure that you have the right printer selected, and you should be good to go. Now, one last thing I'll mention in the video is that if you want to set specific settings to each printer you have on your network through OpenOffice Writer, you can do so by going to File and Printer Settings, and then choosing the printer from this list, going to Properties, and from here you'll be able to select things like the paper size which your printer supports by default if you, for some reason, are not printing to a normal letter size. And on the Layout tab, you can change the orientation, whether you want it to print on both sides of the paper. That's probably the most useful thing here, if uh, that's something you need. And some other options. But in most cases, you don't want to actually set specific printer settings. What you can do instead is just go to the Page Settings by right-clicking on your document and going to Page. But this is a section of OpenOffice Writer, which we will get to in a future video for doing things like changing the size of the document and adding in backgrounds. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll be going into the standard toolbar and I'll be explaining what each of these icons do in detail so that you can understand and use them in your own documents. Till next time, I'll see you then.